Greetings, everyone. Matt here. Coming to you with another uh, video. Uh, I think a lot of you in the Essential Tremor community have gotten re responses to people thinking that your tremor is Parkinson's. And again, I think Parkinson's is more well known than Essential Tremor, as I still get people that are like, have never heard of Essential Tremor. But of course they've heard of Parkinson's. So I was on Facebook today and the International Essential Tremor Foundation had a cool little flyer I would like to go over today stating the difference between Parkinson's and essential tremor. So here is that flyer and it says here essential tremor and Parkinson's disease are often confused because a common visible symptom is an involuntary shaking in some part of the body. PD Parkinson's disease is more widely known, but ET impacts eight times as many people. You'll have to excuse me, my voice is a little slurry today because of my DBS. Uh, if I don't get as much sleep as usual, my voice is slurry and it sounds like I'm drunk and I swear I have not been drinking, nor do I drink. It is the DBS. Uh, and I have my DBS turned up pretty high. And when, like I said, when I'm tired, a little slurry speech. But bear with me, that's just how it is. I'd rather have a little slurry speech than a tremor. Nothing. Okay. Number one, tremor amplitude. Low amplitude, so the amplitude of the tremor is more variable, ranging from a barely perceptible to a high amplitude tremor. Higher, faster frequency. Whereas in Parkinson's, the amplitude is lower and a slower frequency. Amplitude is, I guess, the loudness or softness of the tremor. And the frequency is how um, fast or slow it is, right? So maybe in Parkinson's it's slower. So let's see. And then my voice is really going to get slurry because I keep turning this thing off and on for this video. All right, so. I guess it would be louder. And the frequency is kind of fast. Let me turn this back on. So I'm guessing Parkinson's is a little slower. With all of this, the uh, content I've been watching on the internet, it's more related to essential tremor, not Parkinson's. So it's been a while since I've seen uh, Parkinson's patients. All right, next. Activity. So essential tremor is mostly seen during action, whereas the Parkinson's tremor is mostly seen at rest. So I'm gonna turn myself off again. Now, if I try to relax, which again, I'm holding my hands up. That's a posture, that's an action. Let me, uh, of course this is hard to use. So you, you can see in both cameras, if I relax, my tremor is very barely visible, but once I try to do stuff like pick up that pick, it's just not possible. Oh man, intense. Woo. All right, family history. 
give me a minute here. Holy cow. Oh. It's got to re equalize for a second. Oh, man. Again, my DBS is turned up uh, to really counteract that tremor that when I turn it off for a while, for a longer period of time and then turn it back on, it takes uh, a while and it's more intense, but it doesn't harm me or anything. Uh, so there you go. Uh, okay, family history. Uh, family history uh, reported in more than 50% of patients. That's true. My dad has it. My dad didn't really develop it until later in his life. See, my voice is starting a little better as we, as I keep talking. Um, and my brother and sister, I mean, it's like so mild. But uh, yeah, I was the, the lucky one. But yes, family history in my family, but rarely a family history in Parkinson's, less than 10%. I did not know that. Moving on, age. Onset, most common in middle age, but can occur any time in the lifespan. That makes sense. I mean, I kind of had one when I was really, really young. But as I aged, it got uh, worse. And now I'm in my late 40s, and it's probably, well, obviously, it's the worst it's ever been. But thanks to technology, as you've known, uh, watching me on this channel, life-changing. But the onset for Parkinson's is usually between the ages of 55 and 65. That I did not know. I knew it was later on in life. So that's interesting. I'm kind of learning or relearning some, some stuff myself here. Location usually affects both sides of the body, initially bilateral or, or and symmetrical. Uh, usually, uh, so actually, before I get to the Parkinson's part, again, I'm gonna put myself through the, uh, the ringer. It's crazy. I turn it, I unlock the uh, screen, and it's gotta connect to the battery, and that gets me a little. Uh, and then I turn it off, and as you can see. It's symmetrical. It's pretty much the same on both sides. Um, so it is bilateral and it is symmetrical. Um, my dominant hand is my left hand, but I do a heck of a lot with my right hand. And a lot of times they say it's worse in your dominant hand. They meaning neurologists, but um, it's weird with some things it's worse than my right hand and with some things it's worse than my left hand, but I think if you were to average everything out, it's it's pretty evenly worse in both. Okay, give me a minute. I just turned it back on. <laughs> oh. All right. Makes me a tad queasy, too. Which, ah, yeah, give me a minute there. Give me a minute, everyone. Alcohol. Alcohol consumption improves the tremor. I used to drink, and in actuality, I used to drink quite a bit. You know, stressors in life will cause a person to drink. And then you see benefit in the tremor and you're drinking more because you see the tremor all the time, but it does help the tremor for a good couple of hours. But I tell you what, after the fact, your tremor gets worse. So that sucked. I had to get off of the alcohol 
Um, for that reason, mainly is just because it just made things even worse. I did not know that Parkinson's is only it has no impact. Alcohol has no impact on Parkinson's tremor. I did not know. And I also, uh, I skipped over this, but usually starts on one side of the body and progresses to the other side. Usually remains asymmetrical. Uh, I did not know that with Parkinson's. So this is, again, this is uh, cool stuff. And again, I am speaking from experience. I'm not a doctor. But this is pretty credible coming from the Essential Tremors uh, Foundation here. So also, if you like the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. And I will keep creating more content. All right, the treatment improves with primidone and propanolol in some cases. And in my case, it improved with gabapentin as well. And I also uh, took clonopin, which is a benzodiazepine. So I was taking three different meds. Um, and it also, uh, I, I was also um, treated with Botox injections in my arms. That was weird and it didn't help that much. DBS so far is the best treatment I've found. I will keep you posted if I undergo any other treatments, but at this point I think I'm locked in with DBS. <laughs> ah. God forbid I would want to go through any more brain surgeries. Not saying it was horrible, but you know, I mean, who wants to go through brain surgery? Honestly. All right. Um, and the treatment for Parkinson's is levodopa. And I believe that to be a synthetic form of dopamine which dopamine is not present in the brain of a Parkinson's patient. So, there you have it. Um, and again, I'm not a doctor, that is from my understanding. Moving on, affected areas. <clears throat> Hands predominantly are affected, but tremor can also be present in the head and the voice. All right, one more of these. Let's see, Let's see what we got here. It looks like an old Nokia, doesn't it? It's okay. It's like, yeah, let me uh, dial the operator. Whoops, why am I all shaky? Uh, it is. And again, I have said this in previous videos, I had no idea it was in my voice because for 10 years before this, I was taking uh, meds that helped the trimmer and I didn't realize it was in my voice. And now that I'm on zero meds, I can tell it's in my voice. It's in my head as well. Um, I'll probably do a video about this, but me brushing my teeth. You know, you can see it's in my head. If I'm trying to eat something, uh, it's, it's like, what a dirty trick. Um, but yeah, primarily in my hands, more than anything. And let's get our stimulation back on. Oh, a little intenser. Oh, seems to affect me more too when I'm tired. It's more intense when I'm tired. Hmm. Okay, moving on here, let's see. And last but not least, oh, here, wait, before we go, go on. Hands affected more than the legs, a voice and head almost never 
affected in Parkinson's. Wow. See, I didn't know that either. Interesting stuff here. Uh, and last but not least, stress worsens. Uh, it worsens with emotional stress. I can attest to that. Um... I'm sure you out there, uh, if you have a central tremor or know someone, um, yeah, when you're angry, when you're agitated, I mean, man, I'd be driving and someone would cut me off and be like, ah, oh, what the heck, you know? Instantly the tremor comes out. Um, other things, you know, hot showers, caffeine, any kind of stimulant, uh, a lot of different uh, stressors can activate a central tremor more. And the same with Parkinson's. So that's like really the only thing that's similar is they both worsen with emotional stress. So wow, that was some good information to know. Uh, please feel free to leave any tidbits in the comments you can also reach me email at mattlovesdbs at gmail.com m-a-t-t-l-o-v-e-s dbs at gmail.com feel free to watch some of the other content on this channel as I've documented my whole dbs journey and I've documented it pretty thoroughly so all kinds of good information on this channel. So check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.